Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Angela. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm currently a community organizer with the LA Eco Village Institute. Um, I'm also the uh, one of the team leads at Sunrise Movement LA. Um, so I'm outside of that. I'm an er uh, uh, an urban economist and urban ecologist. I think a lot about the home in a climate positive world. Um, so today I'll be sharing a little bit about my experiences at COP26. Um, so next piece. Uh, so this is uh, today's talk is all about my time at Glasgow um, and COP26 last November. Uh, but rather than focusing on high level conclusions for the COP, um, I just want to give uh, some like emotional color to things that were happening in the climate movement and to orient us all uh, um, towards the future of the movement. So not only is the COP an opportunity for world leaders to assess the current climate crisis and uh, sign agreements that would address the climate crisis in some way, it's also an opportunity for observers to hold world leaders accountable, as well as to create opportunities for activism, which are really important. Um, so I spent a lot of time at the People Summit, which was a parallel conference alongside COP26 that made more room for discussions of climate justice um, and centered marginalized voices that weren't really given a stage inside the COP. Um, so a, a highlight of the summit was an international day of action that called on people all over the world to uh, march for climate justice wherever they are. Um, so I joined the march that happened in Glasgow, which drew around 100,000 people out into the streets. Um, so it, a, a tidbit from the call to action of the day of action. Um, justice won't be handed to us by world leaders or delivered by corporations. Only we can imagine and build the future that works for all of us. The, the transformative solutions that we need to survive and build a more just and fair world can only be brought about through collective action, solidarity, and coordination from our local communities and international levels. Um, so for me personally, the most poignant moment of the march was seeing a delegation from the Pacific Islands Climate Action Network marching with their national flags and uh, just the most triumphant music and huge smiles on their faces. Um, and so to, to that signals a lot of joy to me, um, which is a really important aspect to the movement. Um, and as we uh, end on a note looking towards the future, I'd like to share a moment of personal joy with all of you from the summit. Um, so I went to a workshop called Tales of Transformation, working with narratives for climate just futures. And the gist of this workshop um, was that we understood that there was still a lot of work to be done uh, by people like you and me. Um, and a big part of the work needs to be uh, changing the dominant narrative about climate change um, and start telling each other different stories about our future. So uh, this thought of telling each other better stories really inspires me. Um, and so I, I wanna bring some of the questions that were asked in this workshop to you all for you, to, you and your communities to reflect on. So I will read these questions. I want you to imagine a world where climate change and environmental degradation have been overcome. What would it feel like to live in such a world? What would we value in such a world? What are personal and shared responsibilities in such a world? And how can people contribute to the emergence and maintenance of such a world? Thank you.